The government's contentious $51 billion NBM scheme is nearing completion, but Australia will lag behind the rest of the world in terms of internet speed and pricing. Joining me live is Tech Guide editor Stephen Fennick. Tell me more, Stephen. Good morning, Tim. Yes, uh, the $51 billion NBN is just about complete, uh, and that works out at $4,500 per household, if you do the math. And for that amount of money, unfortunately, not everyone is able to access gigabit speeds. For To make this a truly world-class network, it really does have to offer most of the customers 1,000 megabits per second, which at the moment, less than 28% uh, of people can only access those speeds. And Australia ranks well down the list uh, uh, compared to other countries who have way more gigabit speed access than we do right now. So I think it's up to the NBN, I think, now that the initial rollout has been completed to come up with a plan to, to give, to improve parts of the network, to offer those higher speeds to customers when they need them. I think even though the NBN rollout is nearly complete, it's, I, I compare it to painting the Harbour Bridge. You start the Sydney Harbour Bridge. You, you start once you start and get to the other side. By the time you get to the other side, you got to you got to start all over again. So I think what they need to do now is to make a plan to hopefully improve parts of the network that, to its credit, did very well during the COVID crisis. It did help us work and learn from home, so it held up very well. But at these gigabit speeds, it's going to propel us into the future and make make it a much better network. I think well, we need some improvement there. Now, I know you're nervous about uh, the Rabbitohs playing the Bulldogs tomorrow night, but I thought we discussed last week that you were going to have some snowy <laughs> mountains over your shoulder. Well, but we've got uh, the Xanadu look. I'm expecting someone to come out yeah. with leg warmers on. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's interesting. It's, it's like you're giving me homework here, Tim. But uh, it, <laughs> well. tr try, to, try to find a background that's oh, actually joking. suitable but without sort of taking too much attention off me. I want people to look at me and not, not the background. It's, it's trying to find that right balance. Oh, no, no, don't <laughs> worry. I was a Xanadu fan. Amazon launches massive fulfilment centre in Western Sydney, tell us about this one. Yeah, this is this is big news for Western Sydney. This is going to create more than two thousand jobs, and the reason it's a it's a big deal is because this fulfilment centre is going to include some of their cutting edge robotics technology. So, anyone who knows uh, orders on Amazon, there is a, there's actually two big centres out here in Western Sydney where the new one will have these new robotic technology that will be able to process those orders a lot faster. They'll also be able to store, able to store more product as well. This this facility, just to give you an idea of the size, it's the size of 22 football fields. So it's a massive facility wow. that can can accommodate the the size of the business in Australia. And the Amazon Australia business has only been in December this year. It'll be three years since Amazon came to Australia, and the business has grown. It's doubled year on year. So you can just imagine the the need for this kind of technology to be able to process those orders faster. And also, too, on the storage side, these robots can actually store twice as much product in the same space as a human can. So they're really making a, a lot of use of the available space, but also processing those orders really quickly using this amazing robotics technology. Yeah, amazing. Uh, Apple's new iPhone 12, what's the story here? Well, there's a big rumour doing the rounds that the new iPhone 12, which is due out in a few months, may not come with a charger in the box and may not even have a pair of earphones in the box either. There's a couple of reasons behind this. The, the, the approach I think Apple would probably take here is that it's more an environmental issue. Uh, anyone who's buying an iPhone 12 later this year is likely to already have a charger. Uh, there are a lot of third-party chargers available as well. So making these charges that are just going to sit in a box and that perhaps end up in landfill is one consideration. The other consideration is that Apple will also be offering as an additional accessory a faster charging uh, charger as well. So 20 watt charger that will enable you when purchased separately, connect it to your phone and it will charge the phone way faster than it has ever before. Now, if, you can, if you consider the fact that not having a charger in the box, not having earphones in the box, I think there'll still be a cable. The result is a much smaller package to ship as well. So I think Apple, again, taking that approach where less shipments to, to, to actually transport more product, it's going to be less of an impact on the environment, reduces their carbon footprint as well. So I think 
they, they've got a motivation on either way, convenience, but also environmental factors there as well. Bankwest Stadium tomorrow night. Are you confident that South Sydney will overcome the Bulldogs, who I think are, have actually, uh, you know, their form hasn't been all that bad. They're starting to get it together. Yeah, I'll, I'll be there tomorrow night, Tim. And uh, uh, Bulldogs always, for some reason, they really give us their, their best. They always come up against South and play very well. It used to be the traditional Good Friday clash uh, every year. So it'll be a really interesting contest. I'll be there hoping the boys put their best foot forward and uh, get out of this uh, losing run. Yeah, I love Bankwest. I might even pop out with a couple of pies and my sons tomorrow night as See well. You out Good there. on you, Stephen.